Hello everyone. Welcome to this video where we're going to look at how we can control the panel edge connectivity between different panels and different members uh, using new capabilities within S Timber. Now to set the stage here, I have a simple model. This is two CLT panels. Uh, you can see here I just have fixed supports on the four corners of these panels and this has been meshed into shell elements. And on this model, I have a single load that's been applied. It's an area load just applied to one of these panels. And I'm going to start off by just showing you what happens using the default connectivity between these elements. It's assuming that they are basically rigidly connected to one another, or moment connection might be a better term. Uh, so here I can go to the Run menu, click on Analyze, and Run. And we get our results, and really what I'm most interested in showing right now is the deflected shape. So here I can see the deflection, and this is deflecting in a very similar way that I would expect it to if it were one single piece of material. I can also look at things like our uh, moment diagram. So here I'm looking at the strip integration line results, and I can see here that the moment is indeed transferred along the length of that uh, panel. Now let's look at this in a different way and say, well, what happens if we want to pin this uh, connection between the two panels? And to do that, what I can do is I can actually use this connection, uh, sorry, this um, connection tool. And I have the option to configure the connection tool between either a member uh, connection type or a panel connection type. I'm going to use the panel option. And I can even choose the connection type that's being used, uh, whether it's totally detached, meaning that the the two uh, panels are, are not actually connected to one another, despite them being very closely located next to one another. Uh, I can make it pinned, which is my end goal here. Or I can make it rigid, meaning that that line where they're connected is fully rigid. Or it can be some custom option where I can control the degrees of freedom uh, that are shared between them. I'm going to go with the pinned option here. And I need to select the primary panel. I'm going to select it here, and you notice primary panel was ID number one. It's showing up here now that I've selected it. And then the secondary panel, I'm going to click on this one, and that's showing up as a secondary panel ID. I could do more than just this if I had more than two panels, uh, but I'm going to have it selecting the edge automatically for me, and I'll click Apply. And what we'll be able to see here, if I go to maybe the physical element view, it's going to basically create this constraint along this line here. That's why this line is a different color than it was before. It would have been normally this purple color, but now it is this green color indicating the presence of a constraint. And if I go to the finite element view, I can actually see here that there are basically duplicate sets of joints that have been created that coincide with one another, but they are constrained together so that they only transfer translations and not moments. So here, if I go to the object view, I can reanalyze. And you can see I'm again viewing the moment uh, diagrams. And what we'll notice right away is that the moment is essentially goes to zero at this uh, middle location. But maybe the deflection diagram will be a little bit more interesting. We can see the deflection diagram and does look quite a bit different than it did before. We are now definitely getting that hinge action forming at the center, uh, at the uh, intersection between those panels. And I can see the presence of the panels uh, constraint here as well. If I go to the spreadsheet view, under input geometry, I have this panel connection. And here I can see the panel that's been defined. I could give it a name if I wanted to. Um, and I can change the connection type uh, if I needed to that as well. Now this can be applied in other contexts as, as well. Uh, so here we have another model. This model, as you can see, is comprised of a glulam frame that is supporting a CLT structure. And let's just assume, for example, here, if I look at the physical element view, that I wanted to create a pin connection between um, some of the panels that I have here and the underlying members. So I could do that in much the same way. I can say I want to create a panel connection that is pinned. And I want this panel to be uh, the primary panel ID. And maybe it's pinned to this member here. So I just left click on that member. You can see here it shows up as a secondary member ID. I could also add other panels or whatnot to this connection if I'd like to. And once I'm done, I click the apply button. 
and it's going to generate that connection for me. So under finite element, I can now see that that connection uh, has those constraints indicative of that type of uh, connectivity. And this could work for larger scale objects as well. So if I wanted to create uh, panels along all the edges, again, just do the same thing. Left click here to make this my primary panel. Left click here to make this secondary. We can see a little preview of that edge. Another one here and another one here. And apply that connection. And the finite element model will reflect that as well. So it's very easy for us to model these, uh, whether they're connected to members or panels and represent the type of load transfer that we would expect.